the B-17 of the 324th Bomb Squadron, 91st Bomb Group, serial number 4239975, one of hundreds of B-17s assigned to this group. These pictures were taken on March 18, 1944, on mission to Oberpfaffenhofen, Germany. The B-17 was piloted by First Lieutenant Ronald M. Nichols and his crew in these pictures. The aircraft was later named or renamed to Just Plain Lonesome, which is behind the crew of Lieutenant Nichols in this picture. The same aircraft was also known as Baltimore Oriole, but I couldn't find any pictures of the nose art. Possible never painted on the aircraft. Note the markings for 20 flown combat missions. This crew picture was taken on April 4, 1944. No combat mission was flown by the 91st Bomb Group on that day. This B-17 completed 20 more missions, making a total of 40 missions, before the aircraft was sent to its 31st mission, 30th of May 1944. The 91st Bomb Group sent 29 planes to that day's mission. Target was Junkers Aircraft Factory at Dessau, Germany, the town where I am living. It's the second time within three days when the Junkers Aircraft Factory was attacked by the 91st Bomb Group. First attack was only two days ago, on 28th of May, 1944. The B-17 was in the lead group, left wingman of lead plane, which was flown by Lieutenant Colonel Milton. Just plain lonesome, now a 323rd Bomb Squadron aircraft, was piloted by 1st Lieutenant Zack C. Collier Jr. on this day with co-pilot 2nd Lt. John T. Keller, Navigator 2nd Lt. William P. Clements, Bombardier 2nd Lt. Harry J. McDermott Jr., Top Turret Gunner Technical Sergeant Harry L. Ward, Radio Operator Technical Sergeant Stephen Kogut, Ball Turret Gunner Staff Sergeant George R. Zornheld, The Only Waste Gunner Staff Sergeant Tommy Cockdill, and Tail Gunner, Staff Sergeant Charles J. Simon. They were an experienced crew. Their average number of completed missions was 16. Lieutenant Colonel Milton remarked later about the May 30th mission. Quote, A number of various types of enemy aircraft attempted to throw us off our bomb run, but P-51 Mustangs swarmed in from somewhere. And between us, we handled the situation very well. If it hadn't been for our fighter support today, we might have encountered real trouble because the Luftwaffe had every type of enemy aircraft in the sky. End quote. But the little friends can't protect the heavy bombers from enemy ground fire. The flak was heavy and accurate, and just plain lonesome was hit by flak over the target and then hit by enemy aircraft. Two engines were knocked out. The description in Missing Air Crew Report 5355, made by First Lieutenant Herschel E. Mosley, reads as follows. An aircraft, believed to have been B-17G, 4239975, was last sighted at 11.15 hours, just after bombs away, 30th of May 1944. Said aircraft was hit by flak at the target, at which time he called on VHF stating he had two engines out and no airlong control and requested fighter support. As result of fighter attack at this point, I was no longer able to observe subject aircraft. It was the last contact with the B-17 and its crew. The bombing run was made from southwest to northeast direction and remains of the airfield are still exist today. The B-17 was last sighted near the town Zerbst which is approximately 17 kilometers or 10.5 miles northwest of Dessau, over 700 kilometers or 435 miles away from Great Yarmouth at the English coast. A long trip home with only two engines running, alone, without protection of their friends and comrades in the bomber formation. Just plain lonesome, and its crew never made it back. I have looked in German documents by searching each name of the crew, just in case that possible existing files didn't connect it to the missing air crew report. But no luck, I couldn't find anything by the time of recording this video. This could indicate 
that the B-17 and its crew did not make an emergency landing or crashed in occupied Europe, the Germans would issue a report to the downed Allied aircraft. Instead, it was probably lost in the North Sea or the English Channel. The crew members were officially declared dead on September 10, 1945. And they are listed on the wall of the missing at Cambridge American Cemetery and Memorial and Henry Capel American Cemetery and Memorial at Liege, Belgium. To this day, there are no traces of the B-17 nor the crew. Thank you for watching my video about the B-17 just plain lonesome and her crew. If this video was interesting to you, please consider to hit the like button and subscribe to my B-17 YouTube channel.